Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about Paths 2, which is the newest sample library by Audio Modern. Just uh, a few weeks ago, I did a video on Paths 1, and I really liked it. And now, uh, with the release of Paths 2, I decided to get it and to make a video. And the way I'm going to do this is I've made a track here using only Paths 2. I want to play that for you and then we'll take a look at how I've made it and which elements I've used and so on. So uh, two remarks up front. First of all, I have used only paths to nothing else. And secondly, um, I decided to use only contact. If you buy paths to, um, not only will you get the contact files, but you will also um, get Apple loops, you will get uh, WAV files, you will get REX files and so on. So you have, uh, you get paths too in a bunch of different versions, but I wanted to go only with uh, contact. I'll explain later uh, why. Uh, didn't necessarily make it easier on myself that way, but it's just something I, uh, I wanted to do. So let's have a listen at the track and then we'll, uh, we'll take a look at what I've used and how I've used it. Alright, that was the track. As you heard, it's not a big epic track, It's uh, which is something I, I like to make a lot. But of course, that's not uh, how life is, you know, you don't get to make only nice big epic tracks and, and or, or uh, you know, the, the heavy stuff. You gotta, as a composer, you gotta make a bit of everything. And um, Paths 2 comes in handy in different ways and for many different people, different types of composers and so on. Um, what I wanted to do for myself is uh, considering what it was, I wanted to respect up to a certain level what uh, Pats is aimed at. So it's definitely not aimed at fast and epic and, and, and so on. It is more aimed at underscore type of things, ambient type of things. Um, and I thought, okay, I'm going to make something soundtrack-like uh, with a dark feeling, because if I can't go epic, I like to go dark, you know, that's just how I seem to be, even though I'm a very happy person, really, and I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. Uh, but yeah, I went with dark. Um, let's take a look at paths first. How you get it out of the box. This is paths two. Resembles very much paths one. Interface is almost almost exactly the same here. Um, the big knob here in the in the middle allows you to select your construction kit. So you have twenty five construction kits. You see here the number of the kit and at what BPM it's. Uh, at its most natural, I guess, but of course it's um, um, tempo synced. So I decided to record this track in 100 at 115 uh, BPM. 
so yeah here you're going to choose your construction kit and then here uh, you get so what is a construction kit actually it's a combination of six loops so you get six tracks which each contain a loop and uh, with the green button here you can play the entire um, construction kit with the blue keys you can play the element separately and then with the red keys you can uh, play different notes uh, if, if that is applicable here and there so for example this one here uh, what do we get so the way a lot of people might use this you know if you have to really quickly make a, some type of underscore some background music for a video or some background music for no matter what or you're into the uh, into the uh, ambient music and so on or you're a beginning composer you know you can just go like this and build up and then you go to so like this you have six elements and if you've seen my video of paths 2 it was kind of the same thing but they've added uh, yeah, but they've added something in, in paths too, which is the what you see here at the top. You have now the ability, and that was something you didn't have in paths one, uh, you have now the ability to change, for example, the loop on this channel here. So uh, let's see, what do we have? So yeah, I like this guitar loop, but I don't like the, uh, the uh, percussive element, for example. Then I can change to something else. So let's go to one, one. You get a bit of a soft beat there that already works. Uh, let's see, two, one. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Let's see what else we've got. That definitely doesn't match. Ah, this could be okay. Depending on where you want to go with your uh, with your track, of course. Okay, so you get the idea. So like that, you're going to um, every now and then, you know, the way I, I, I can imagine working is uh, just going through all of the construction kits and uh, seeing what inspires me. You know, it can be the entire kit. It can be a certain element from it. And then go here and look for, you know, take out the elements that you don't like, the loops that you don't like, and, and find another one, you know. Um, the way I will mostly use this personally is, um, well, the way I just mentioned, if I have to make some background music that's not really important, if, that, if I have to compose quickly and it, the, the music doesn't matter so much, you know, you just want to get something done as quickly as possible, then I'll use it in this way. But what I will also definitely do a lot is use paths to fill up uh, a composition you know it, it can be even an epic trailer composition or 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 a soundtrack whatever you know you when you when i start composing that i will start with the melody and then add the <clears throat> excuse me the percussion line and then once the the basic structure is there you're going to start filling up you know like you do with any sound design library except that paths is different than other sound design libraries this has doesn't have the typical booms and impacts and brams and stuff like that this is sound design in a different way which you also need people focus too much lately on uh, or you know, I, that's an impression i have pardon me for saying rude things i, I don't always mean what i say <laughs> but uh yeah you know a lot of people like the big epic stuff and the heavy stuff and so on the brams and the booms and like like i just said but uh, of course you have to you have to have a bit of everything in there. Sound design is filling up your composition with low-end stuff, high-end stuff, and, and, and a bit of everything and everywhere. And, uh, yeah, that's where audio modern in general is quite original and quite uh, innovative, I would say. Okay, I've been talking so much, I don't remember now what I was what I was actually talking about. Pats too, that's where we were. Yeah, so... You get the idea of how this works. What I've done a lot in my composition is also change the effects. I've used the stutter a lot. I've used the filter a lot. Um, as I go through some of the elements, I will mention what I have done for those uh, for those uh, loops. Something else that I've done is I did not use... Maybe you've noticed already. If you look here... Um, at all my tracks, the names that I've used... Don't pay too much attention to the names I've used. I mean... I was working fast and I, I just put a name there that, that, that 
meant something to me. So I have some atmospheric elements, some effects, and so on. So what that means is I have not used the construction kits as they come here. What I have done is I made combinations on this section here. I said, okay, I have a percussive element here. I'm going to look for other cool percussive elements, and I've put all the percussive elements in, in different tracks. And I've done the same for effects and for... Uh, bass related things and so i have actually made combinations of types of instruments which allowed me took me about two hours to do that but it was totally worth it because that allowed me to quickly find uh the elements that i needed in my composition i need some percussion okay bam i go to my percussion patch and i'll just go through the loops and that's an easy and quick way of working it's just me. I'm a bit of a freak. Don't pay too much attention to that. That's what I wanted to do, and I'm happy with the way I did that. Uh, okay, let's go through my track again. Um, let's just start with the beginning. I'm not going to pay too much attention to the atmospheric things and the effects because I didn't do much there. I just took some uh, effects that I liked and uh, and kept that as it uh, kept them as they were. So that's just what that is, you know. Um, didn't do anything really uh, specific there. What is probably worth mentioning is the risers. Uh, there were a few risers in Pats 2, and uh, some of them I kind of made myself, like this one here. And another one, I've combined that with... So this is actually a, a vocal type of uh, instrument, vocal type of loop. And then I combined here in this patch, I combined all the, the risers. Let's play, play them separately quickly. Uh, really like this one, dark, soft, dark, but still very threatening, you know? What else do we have? Don't know if you noticed, but here I've you see my volume going up and down a little bit. Why did I do that? Well, this patch here or this loop here shows it. Take a good take a good look and listen. So when I press my key, there's a bit of sound there that's you would say it's not supposed to be there, but that's of course because we are working with loops, you know, and then you get uh, a little bit of the leftover here of, of the end of the loop actually so I'll play I'll, I'll keep it pressed now so you can hear the riser part so this is the part that I actually wanted so that is why because of this part here this little bit of sound that I have that's why I, I went down with the volume at the beginning of the MIDI note and then I went up to create uh, that sound to, to, to have the sorry to uh, to have the um, the riser part um, so that's why I've done this with the volume again I could have of course used the wave file because you get the the, the, the wave files as well um, but like I said at the beginning of the video I wanted to use only contact and one of the main reasons was well first of all I like a challenge every now and then and secondly I wanted to use the effects now in this case I haven't used the effects but I did use them on other parts so um yeah i just i just love contact anyway i wanted to work with the effects and so on so that's why i decided contact only let's take a quick listen at the risers here let's combine these two and this one of course ends when the the percussion kicks in okay so that explains why i have done that with the volume um of course no big epic risers they would not fit here either you know it's a, it's a pretty calm track it's dark calm not not too bombastic all right percussion 
I'll uh, I'll skip the first one here. I'll come back to that later. Uh, let's start or let's take a look at the booms here. I've used this one, and ah, that's it. Did I use? No, I've just used this one here. Did I really use only that one? No, I didn't. Right. Ah, yes, I remember what I did now. Uh, so take a good listen. So this is the, the boom, the main boom. And I've combined that with this one. Now, if I keep this one pressed, it continues. But what I've done is I let go of this key because I just wanted the, um, the um, how do you call that? The, uh, the, ef the effect, the, en the ending of the effect. So what I did was, and then I let go of the key of channel two. So it, just to have that crispy sound, you know, at the at the end of, of the hit. That's what I've done. I played with the effects also. So here in the filter, you can see that I've tweaked it a little bit. Um, so originally that sounded like this. That's more aggressive. That's louder. I didn't want it too loud. I wanted to have it soft. So instead of this, I went for for this. That's of course something you that that I did a lot as I was composing. You know, the more I I built up my composition, the more I started tweaking the sounds to fit better into the uh, the entire composition. Okay, so that was the booms. Then I've added some beat here also. Uh, come back to that later as well, maybe percussive effects yeah let's see what we've done here right i can already see and then i went further here So uh, it was one four one one. Ah, okay. So this one here, one one, and this one here. So you see, it's the same loop, but I changed it a little bit. W what I do, and I, I've done that several times in my track, is that I've used the same loop, like here on this channel and on this channel, but I changed the uh, the, the the effects. You know, so you get a different different type of sound. So I started with this one, I believe. And I later I, I went to this one. Same loop, but different effect settings. That's just to keep things interesting. Uh, maybe you did not consciously hear it, but your brain does capture those things. And um, yeah, it keeps it more interesting. Where was the... Ah, here. Right, so you can see it here. Here I've used this combination, and then here I went to to this. It it cuts through a bit more because this sound here is uh, is uh, sharper. Okay, and I've done that throughout the whole uh, the whole composition. Right. Um, before I dive into the percussive elements, let's go to the. Instruments, yeah, I know. Funny name, I called it instruments. Ha ha. <laughs> it's, I mean, of course, there's more instruments. I didn't know what else to call it, so I called it instruments. Who cares? Uh, so what I have here is a house synth. Yeah, again, my way of naming stuff. Don't pay too much attention to it. Um, no, I've used this one. So you get a bunch like these. Thank you. 
so yeah that's nice to to fill up you know just to to put underneath everything to to support it a bit um yeah and then we get to the probably the main element is the i call them bells i know they're not necessarily bells but uh you'll get why i why i called it like that again don't pay attention to the way i name stuff what i've done here again the same thing um 203 uh, 03 so same loop three different versions let's have a listen um again to keep things interesting i started off like this the one on channel six then i went to this And then here. And I've done the same. Ah, I didn't. Okay. But you get the idea. So I started off with this one. Quite normal, quite simple, but creating that that mood already and, and, and having that sound. And then I build up by going here. So what I've done here, obviously, is I've played with the uh, stutter. So the normal sound is this. This is how it sounds out of the box. But then, of course, I've I've put the stutter there. I've played with I played with the filter, and it seems like that's all I did. So you get this as a result. You know, I, I went with a bit of electronic, futuristic atmosphere in the whole track, so I, I thought that this would fit quite nicely. The stutter has that, gives that kind of feeling, in my opinion. And then the third one, uh, yeah, this one. Now this is actually without any any changes. This is out of the box. Okay, so the, the, those of course the, the whole tweaking and changing all those things in the effects page, you do that as you as you build up. You know, at least that's how I do it. You know, uh, you you listen to your track as it is at that moment, and then you adapt the sound a bit to to make sure that it's at its best uh, within the track. So those were the bells. And then yeah, some some more effects here, some guitar effects, very smooth, very subtle. Um, let's take a look at what I've done here. <coughs> okay, so that's ah, there was a tail. I forgot about that. So it starts, goes down, and then you get this tail. You have that quite often, so uh, don't be surprised if you buy pads too and you select a certain element and you hit the key that nothing happens. You know, it, it might take a while before the actual sound comes. Uh, something else I should mention is that some of the loops have different lengths, uh, which is not really a problem, it's just something you have to take into account. I've also, by the way, combined loops of different lengths, so definitely not a problem. Uh, da -da, guitar FX2. What did I use here? You see how long that took before it kicked in? Very subtle, but nice elements to, to add. You know, this is also sound design. Um, and I like this kind of small stuff, you know, especially like in a composition like this one, which is not too heavy, not too epic, not too not too aggressive. These little elements, they really make a big difference. You, you actually still hear them and they create so much atmosphere. So, yeah, that's the instruments. Everything I haven't used, I also put it in here, but we'll keep that for the end. Uh, yeah, and then we get to the main part. Uh, so I want to talk about the percussion and the bass. Let's uh, have a quick listen at, at, at how it sounds again. Okay. 
Okay, I, I wish I could ask you now what's the first thing that you notice here. And uh, for me personally, it's the what I call the hybrid horns and the low brass, uh, low yeah, low bass synth. Love this element. Love it. Love it. Um, hybrid horns. Here we go. I should start with this one. This one. I call them hybrid horns. If you read that, you'll probably expect something different, more aggressive, more uh, whatever. This is for me the, uh, the 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 hybrid horn type of thing for softer compositions. You know, it's 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 slow, it's soft in some way, but very threatening and aggressive on the other hand. And I've combined that with this one here. Uh, which one is it? This. No, this. Which adds that depth to it, you know. And then further on the track, just like I've done with my with my belly things and, and, and a few other elements, uh, I varied. So I went from this to this. So again here, I've used the stutter to... Um, to keep things interesting and the same for my hybrid horns uh, where were they I went from this to this so let's have a listen at how that sounds you hear that low bass synth as I call it, it how it fills how it supports the other one Now I'm going to change to the, the, the stutter part here. So in context. And now changing again. The stutter is gone. And that even though it's not a very fast pace this this track has something threatening and and i love this element in there the, the bells create the mysterious part like something ominous is coming and then the 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 hybrid horns and the low bass synth it it creates the threatening atmosphere okay then there's something else arpeggiated in here i have to check what it is again In most of this section here, you almost don't, don't notice this. But near the end, you hear it. And of course, take it away and you will also hear the difference. Here again, I've, I've changed. Look. So now it's this key here, channel one. Ah, sorry, I started with another channel, I guess. Uh, so where do we have it? 12, 2, 12, 2. Ah uh, no, it, sorry, I, I was mistaken. I didn't. I only used this one here. This one, if I'm not mistaken, is the original. Yeah, nothing modified here. And if you listen to it like this, this one sounds better than this one. This one is sharper. But again, the reason why I've modified it, why, why I've changed the effects, and why I went for this sound is because it fit better in it it cut through more in in the composition so let's listen to it in context again and actually it's at the end that you mostly notice it but uh, i'm not going to wait until the end to uh, to play that part but just listen if you hear it have around here you have this more quiet part where you do notice it so this is how you fill up stuff you know you get a more quiet moment in the percussive part or in the aggressive part or in the dark part and then these other things these little details take over and that's where this one uh, comes in nicely right that leaves me with the percussion um percussion let's take a look And 
further on I've used this one I think if you if you're wondering why I've muted so many tracks that's because I wanted to make it clear to myself which ones I've used and which ones I haven't although it's not everywhere correct anyway So I may have uh, nothing here, and in this one, yeah, I've changed the filter a bit, I've added a bit of drive, and while we are at the percussion, let's have a listen at this one here. This one would have been very, I normally would have used this, you know, but I decided, no, 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 not going for that one, too obvious. Really nice uh, percussive loop. there you go more trader direction but I didn't want to go there so it was hard to resist but I didn't use it here you have an example of you see these these two loops don't really match I think they have a different length also so you do get that sometimes all right the booms the booms I think I talked about these already didn't I the booms let's take a quick look I've used a combination of this one and this one here so I went yeah I talked about that one already the beat for the beat I just just in the in the in the main part I just added one you see just one long MIDI track so uh, it just maintains the, the it keeps the rhythm you know the booms let's let's take a quick listen at sorry the booms the beats booms beats whatever <laughs> let's have a listen at how it originally sounded so this is how I made it and the original sound was exactly the same Duh. it's getting late I think I need I need and it's nap time for me so that's the uh, heavier percussion let's say and then I, I have a different folder here called, called uh, light percussion um oh yeah let's go here listen to this one let's solo this did you see where the volume goes up that's the part that i wanted the uh, <laughs> I, let's call it the infernal breath it's a small detail I didn't put it very loud because it was it was difficult because of the sound that came before it uh, which one was it this one here see this I didn't need I needed the uh, have a good listen wait that's what I wanted but I had trouble to cut that out so that that's why it's it's you see this weird uh, thingy going on here but um, again in context let's see let's put these three together the bass the percussion and the light percussion see if you hear it it adds especially to this um to the uh to the bass part here these you know my hybrid horns and so on and uh maybe, maybe i should put a little bit louder ah why did i do that Let's see what it does. No, earlier. Yeah, not so bad. Can we get it even a bit higher? Yeah, so like that one. Let's undo the 
soloing here. Snare and cymbals. Must have been this one. Yeah. Originally, it sounded like this. But you can already hear that that would not fit in my track. It's too much just a normal drum kit and that, yeah, wouldn't fit in here. So I tweaked the sound and made it like this. So in context. It's very subtly in there, um, but if I would not have changed the sound, it um, you would notice it much more and it wouldn't fit. And then finally here, the glitch and shaker. And this one as well. Now the, the glitches are quite sharp for the ears, but what I've done is the same thing here. I've played with the filter. I've even added a stutter here on this one. I guess not on the first one. Here I, I played a bit with the filter and a little bit with the drive. But uh, here I also added some stutter. Again, if you hear the original, this is a real shaker, you know. Wouldn't fit in the track, but like this, it's better. Did I change this one? See, this is quite quite sharp. It's, uh, I still have to figure out for the glitches how how I would use. I mean, for depending on what you're making, for some things, it's, it, I guess it's more obvious. But um, yeah, it's a very sharp sound. So to use it purely as it is, like this, uh, I still have to make my first track where I use it like this. Doesn't matter. I've, I have used it by tweaking the sound. All right, I think I've been through more or less everything. Percussion we've done, we've covered the light percussion, the bass, and so on. So the only thing that remains is some of the things that I didn't use, and that is some strings. Very nice sounding ones, by the way. Very nice. Okay, some vocal elements. Actually, I should go here for that, uh, where I use the vocal riser. Let's see what we have. There's Infernal Breath number two. <laughs> but I like this one also. I I, I, oh, I think I used it originally, but then I decided to take it out anyway. But I really like this one. It could add also very well to the to those bass type of things and uh, to the threatening atmosphere. And this is out of the box, you know, I didn't change anything here yet. So all right, that's it for the vocals. Uh, some strummed things. Ah, there's also some piano loops in there, but I accidentally deleted them, so... Alright, that's that's not strummy stuff. This one is. And this one, this is also not. Alright, it is. Same one. Very nice sound. Right, that's also not strummed. Yeah, I, I didn't do a perfect job when I selected all the, the, the loops and, and combined them per type of instrument, but I gave it a try, you know. There's only so much time you can spend on that. Guitar loops. Or guitar-ish <laughs> loops.
yeah, as I said, guitar-ish as well. Okay, I think uh, I've covered most of it. So again, yeah, of course, I, I because of the way I worked, I didn't pay so much attention to um, the combinations you get in there. Let's just. You get a lot of variety in there. kind of stuff you use in, in like commercials also and 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 here you go commercial for a beauty shop bam hit a few keys and you're done that's for a good for a TV show And of course, you, you see, I'm hitting a few keys here at once, but uh, you can build this up, you know, you can just by building up the keys, you start with two, add a third one, add a fourth one, and, and you can stretch, you know, you make a minute of music in, 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 in one minute. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's easy to use. Okay, you get the idea. Um, so yeah, paths two. I'll uh, I'll add a link here below. So just please click on that link if you want to go to the page. And uh, uh, I would say it's a good moment to order. It's on sale for thirty nine uh, euros at the moment. Uh, it will go to forty nine. Very fair price for what you get. It's not a huge library, but yeah, fair price for what you get. And don't underestimate the uh, the power of the dark side. No, uh, don't underestimate the effect that paths can have. It is. Yeah, I, I for me, I'm going to use this a lot as, as sound design to fill up my compositions. And this is going to make a difference because I don't have any other sound design libraries that do this kind of thing. Not at least not one that comes to mind at this moment. So, uh, yeah, hope this in, this video was uh, entertaining both and uh, also interesting uh, for you. And uh, well, see you next time. Bye bye.